Tom Begley, you're leaving Wichita. This ain't legal, Herb. There's nothing legal about you. Cold deck poker, watered whiskey, and extortion from dance hall girls. Now get on your horse. I'll be back. Just as soon as Josh Clanton's elected the new mayor. It'll be a cold day in July. Let's start riding. And I say to you, there's but one real issue in this campaign. And that issue is a scoundrel by the name of Wyatt Earp. That's right. Yeah. 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 Only this afternoon, gentlemen, he set upon my friend, my comrade in arms, Sergeant Jim Begley. And with his usual high-handed and insolent manner, this man, Earp, ordered Jim Begley to leave Wichita. I tell you, my friends, this man, Earp, is the lowest type of thug. He's become the willing tool of Mayor Jim Hope. And this unspeakable editor, Marsh Murdoch. And I promise you... Oh, shut up, Clanton. Get off of that wagon. I promise you, the moment that I'm elected, I'll fire Wilder. Shut up, I said, and get down from there. We'll come up and pull you off. I advise you not to try it, sir. I'm a veteran of the war, and I'm still young enough to... Hold it, Mr. Grimes. Interrupting the colonel's meeting. But he called your names, Wyatt. All right. You can call him one name. Go ahead. Clanton, you're a dirty... liar. All right, Mr. Grimes. You can take your friends and leave the meeting. Go on. Sorry you interrupted, Colonel. The meeting's all yours. As I was saying, when deliberately interrupted by Earp and his hired killers, I do not fear the man. Any attack upon me is an attack upon all Union soldiers, living and dead. I don't understand, Wyatt. I was only trying to help. I appreciate what you're trying to do for me, Mr. Grimes, but we got to let the colonel have his say. All right, Wyatt. But you tell Jim Hope he's liable to lose this election if he doesn't show up that blatherskite for what he really is. Well, I think you're right. And I'll tell the mayor. And tell Hannigan not to let that Clanton crowd keep our papers off the stands. Well, well, our hero himself, our plumed knight. What? Read my page one editorial. Jim Hope's meeting beat the Colonel's crowd two to one. As our late president said, you can't fool all of the... What's the matter? Don't you like what I wrote? Well, it's a little too complimentary. This is no time for modesty, Wyatt. It's a political Look, fight. Look, Mr. Murdoch, I like compliments, but uh, I don't think defending me is the line to take. You think our side is handling things wrong? That's what I'm trying to say, yes. Well, you won't stand up for your record. I have to. You want the Eagle to let Clanton lie about you without answering? Yes, sir, I do. Why? Well, because praising me is only going to make the people that don't like me more determined to vote for Clanton. I'm not the main issue. Oh, come now, Wyatt. No, Colonel Clanton's the main issue. The kind of man he is and the hoodlums that are backing him. I've got quite a file on Clanton. I was hoping I wouldn't have to use it. 
Tell me something. You think Mayor Hope has got it won for re-election? <laughs> he draws the biggest crowds. He's got all the good people. Sure, goodbye election. You can't be that pessimistic. Look, Mr. Murdoch, all the nice people go to rallies and they cheer for Jim Hope. But two-thirds of the registered voters in Wichita live below the line. I think most of them, the way things stand now, aim to vote for Clinton. The only chance is to show up Clinton as such a skunk, they won't be able to stand the smell of them below the line. I didn't think they had any sense of smell left below the line. Well, only a few of them are out and out hoodlums. The rest of them are good people that are just too easily bamboozled by a spotter like the Colonel. If I thought it would save the mayor, I'd quit my job. Now, Wyatt. I guess it would just look like I was quitting under fire and make things worse for him. It certainly would. Well, it's your newspaper. You do what you want. I got my own work to do. Wyatt. I'm convinced. You'll open up in Clinton? With both barrels. Good. Vote with Buckshot. Henry! Let me help you with that, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm not well. I came to see Dr. Fabrique. Isn't, isn't his office... Uh... It's right there, ma'am. Here. Take my arm. Yes. That's it. Now, you walk? Yes. I took too much medicine. Nothing else. Please, believe me. I... Just take it easy, ma'am. Of course I believe you. Watch that step. Doc! Doc! Hurry, Dick! It's Wyatt, Doc. There's a lady here that's very sick. All right, all right. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Clanton. Take her in the office, Wyatt. Right. Just take it easy. Sit on this chair. How much bromide did you take, Mrs. Clanton? I... I don't remember. Bromide? Yeah. I give it to my patients. To quiet their nerves. They keep taking it until they get themselves toxic. Colonel Clinton's wife? Yep. Drink this, Mrs. Clinton. I know you'll feel better. Sorry, Doctor, getting you up at this time of night. No, no, you forget about that, but uh, you can't go on like this, you know. About the Colonel, when are you going to make up your mind to take my advice? I can't do that now. This lady shouldn't be alone. But I guess there's no use in trying to locate the Colonel. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. I'm, I'm feeling much better. I'm not nearly so dizzy now. Yeah. But you still better let Marshal Earp drive you home. Marshal Earp, are you the man my husband says such mean things about? Well, don't let it embarrass you, Mrs. Clinton. It ain't her fault, Wyatt. Doctor... Now you go along with the Marshal. But I shouldn't trouble Mr. Earp if... And it'll look odd if we're seen together. It'll look a lot odder if you have another dizzy spell. It's going to be no trouble at all, Mrs. Clinton. Good night, Doc. Good night, Wade. Good night, Mrs. Clanton. You should take the doctor's advice. What do you know about that? Nothing, Mrs. Clanton. What advice did the doc give you? Dr. Fabrique wants me to leave my husband. Oh. Why did I tell you that? You can go right to Mr. Murdoch at the Eagle. Well, I don't work for Mr. Murdoch, ma'am. Meaning that you won't say anything about any of this? But why wouldn't you? You have every reason to get back at the Colonel. Well, not that way. I have no cause but to trust you. Dr. Fabrique and you are the only men who've been kind to me for a long time. Will you let me drive the rest of the way myself? It's only a few houses. 
course, ma'am. Oh. Look, Mrs. Clanton, it's none of my business, but... Yes? Well, things are going to get awful rough around here, and... Well, you're from New York, aren't you? Couldn't you go back there on a visit? No, Mr. Earp. My husband's threatened to kill me if I try to leave him. Good night. Have you read the Eagle yet? No. I worked late last night. Well, the pot's been a bubbling in more ways than one. Oh? <laughs> Just listen to this. A snake-eyed windbag calling himself Colonel Joshua Clarton has had the unutterable gall to run for mayor of Wichita. Until today, the Eagle has let Josh rant and rave about his great feats of arms as commander of the 10th New York Volunteers in the Civil War. Now, it is time that the voters knew the real facts about this knave, Paltroon, thief and scoundrel. <laughs> Who ever thought that Marsh Murdoch cut it in him? <laughs> what else does he say? Huh? When they find the place. Oh. The record shows that the peerless commander of the 10th New York guards the draft until 1863. Then he and his dear friend, Jim Bagley, yeah, were given the choice of prison or serving in the army. They were convicted of stealing food from the wounded in the wilderness campaign, and they were both dishonorably discharged from the tent. But why? It's just getting juicy. I wanted to talk to you about Mrs. Clanton, but I gotta go see Mr. Murdoch. But this is the best part of it, why? I'll talk to you later. Hold your fire, man! Hold it! Let me attend to Murdoch, then you can wreck the place. Ah, uh, Murdoch, I'm gonna horsewhip you. Stand back, all of you. You're a brave man with your hired killer to protect you. Mention my name in your filthy sheet once more, and I'll shoot you down like a dog. Remember, Earp, you heard what I said. I gave him fair warning. Take your men away from here, Clinton. Next time, I'll come back alone. With a gun. Come on, gentlemen. Never mind that, Henry. We've got an extra with a noon deadline. Hey, you're fighting mad. That's good. Hey, you, uh, you just better wear that. For that coward? Oh, I've seen men that are frightened turn to gunplay when they're cornered. All right. I'm dead serious, Mr. Murdoch. I kind of talked you into that rampage against Clanton. I want you to wear that at all times. It'll make you feel better, Wyatt. Now I've got to send an extra to press. Talk about it later. What's worrying you? What I wanted to talk to you about before was Mrs. Clanton. She told me last night she advised her to leave her husband. It's a private communication between a patient and her doctor. Yeah? Well, Clanton threatened to kill her. That puts it in my department. <laughs> Josh ain't never had the nerve to kill anybody. It's what Marsh Murdoch thinks. Look, Doc, this uh, political row is getting out of hand. Maybe if I can talk Mrs. Clanton into calming her husband down, I can ride her on Murdoch. Oh, well, Murdoch was always a meek and mild man to make a good editor. But now, just when he's dipping his arrows in poison, you want to ruin his whole career. I can see there's no point in talking with you. Certainly ain't. I'm going to go over and see Mrs. Clanton. Good. I hope the Colonel catches you at it. Then we'll have some rail shooting. Doc, you have such a gentle soul. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm Marshal Earp, man. Is Mrs. Clanton home? Yes, but I don't think she'll want to see you. Dora, who is it? It's Mr. Wyatt Earp, and I already told him. No, Dora, I'll talk to Mr. Earp. 
And she changed her mind. It's all right, Dora. If your husband's home, I'd like to talk to both of you. How had you the impudence to come here after this article in the paper? What article? I suppose you know nothing about it. No, I don't. It insinuates that my illness is a thing that should be hidden. That because I'm never seen with my husband, I'm a skeleton in his closet. It even insinuates that perhaps I drink. A fit mate for Private Clanton, a fraudulent warrior. Oh. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Clanton. I, I just can't imagine Mr. Murdoch printing a story like this. Is that so hard to believe when you went right to him with your story? I didn't tell him anything about you. I didn't even mention that we'd met. Why, then it was Dr. Fabrique. No. No, he wouldn't answer any of my questions about you. Does the story mention the fact that you want to leave your husband, but you're afraid to because he threatens you? No. Well, politically, that's even a more damaging story than this. I'm sorry, Mr. Earp. I've been so heartsick about everything. Well, I don't blame you. And Mr. Murdoch will print a retraction. I'll go right over to his office. Marshal, Dr. Fabrig thinks you'd better come right away. Mr. Murdoch's been shot. Who did it? We don't know. It's in the lung and Doc won't let him talk. Was he in any danger? Doc wouldn't say. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Er, really very sorry. Has your husband been home today? I may need to talk to you later. Yes, of course. Marsh Murdoch, editor of the Wichita Eagle, was shot and superficially wounded at 7.15 last night by Jim Begley, a henchman of Private Josh Clanton. Begley was accompanied to the Eagle office by Clanton. Private Clanton tried to do the shooting himself, but lost his nerve. And Begley then drew his own weapon and fired. It was Begley, huh? Yes. Will you get that story over to my office, why? You better get out of here. You're making his temperature go up. If you don't stop shouting, you're gonna make his temperature go up. What? Forget it. Would you like a little nip? I've been looking for you, Marshal. Colonel Clanton gave me his gun. He owns up that he did it. Oh? Well, you plead guilty to the charge? Proudly. I shot Murdoch in defense of my wife's honor. Take him to jail, Sam. I demand an immediate hearing before Judge Jewett. That's for Judge Jewett to decide, not you. Now go on. I was only 19. He was a war hero, an older man, so I was an infatuated fool and married him. All he wanted was a young wife and the money my folks left me. Well, he'll soon be a real hero. He shot my friend in defense of your good name. But Mr. Murdoch said it was that Begley fellow. It's just his word against your husband's. Unless I find Begley. But that's terrible, Mr. Erb. Why, what does Josh Clanton care for me or my reputation? He's disgraced me with women. He keeps me like a prisoner in my own house. Well, Mrs. Clanton, the voters don't know that. Do you mean he might actually be elected mayor? If he gets away with the lie of the injured husband, he can't lose. But he's got to lose. I'll announce I'm leaving him. I'll tell the whole story of why. It's too late for that now. Oh, I, I never dreamed he stood a chance of being elected. I despised him so I thought surely the public would see him as I do. Mrs. Clanton, I've got to find Bailey. Can you help me? 
Oh, I want to, really, I do, but I, I know so little about the man. He brought my husband home several times late at night, but I wouldn't begin to know where to find him. Well, if you do hear from Begley or hear anything about him, will you let me know? Yes, of course. Good night, Mrs. Clinton. Can't you explain to Jim the legal rule that ties my hand? He knows the law, Judge. I'm only asking you to stretch it a little and not let that scoundrel have a chance to strut in court. He's pleaded guilty. He's demanded an immediate hearing and sentence. And the law clearly states that I must give him his day in court to allow him to present extenuating circumstances that might lighten his punishment. It's no use, Jim. Marshal, there's a lady here to see you. She wouldn't give me your name. No, I think I know her name. You better let me talk to her alone. We wait outside. Send her in, Wayne. Yes, sir. Could you come in, please? Good morning, ma'am. It's Begley. He's at the house. Oh? He wanted money, $500. I told him I'd have to go to the bank. Good. You think you'll wait? Oh, I was frightened of him. He knew it. He's sure I'll come back with the money. Good. He has a gun, Mr. Earp. That's wonderful. That's the best news of all. Begley? No, draw. I won't stop until you got your hand on your gun. You want to kill me? I ain't drawing. Erp, you gone loco? You wouldn't shoot me with my hands up, would you? You shot a good friend of mine. Now get outside. Oh, no. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it, Mr. Herb! I'm sorry, Mrs. Clinton. Guess I lost my temper. Oh, he'll tell the truth now. Get him to the court. Hurry! You can take my rig. Murdoch called the woman I loved a drunker. Dr. Fabrique has testified that Mrs. Clanton suffered a nervous breakdown. She took sodium bromide by his prescription. Bromide, sir, a sedative, not an intoxicating liquor. My darling wife, has never tasted even so much as a spoonful of wine. Mr. Clanton, I take it that you're offering the plea of extreme provocation for this court to consider. I make no plea, sir. I did what any decent husband would do. Your Honor, Mr. Begley's got a statement to make to the court. I shot Murdoch. Josh tried to, but he lost his nerve. That's a lie, sir. A contemptible lie. Will you repeat that statement under oath in this court? Yes, sir. <laughs> Very well. Hold up your right hand. This will go on page one. The Wichita Eagle most sincerely apologizes to Mrs. Harriet Clanton and retracts in its entirety the story printed about her two days before the election. The eagle bows its head in shame. During the heat of a political contest, the eagle was careless in its facts concerning Mrs. Clanton, and grossly unjust in its interpretation of those facts. The eagle and its editor have learned a lesson we shall never forget. Is there anything else I can say, ma'am? No, Mr. Murdoch. Thank you very much. Mr. Earp is seeing you to the station. It would be my pleasure. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And 
None can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh.